Now, I wanted Argyle to be good, but it's not looking hopeful, folks. Argyle has a big secret. It's a stunningly bad movie. Swifties have been trying to unravel the mystery at the centre of the action comedy. Here's a hint. The film blows. And in the trailer, there were warning signs. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like putting Henry Cavill in the last five seconds of it, just so you can focus on some random bin with a book. Called a cliffhanger, mother. Ellie, it's called a cop-out. And this movie was always going to come down to two things. If you focused on the spy stuff and Henry Cavill, could have been good. There's only one way to find out. Or you could focus on some random bin with a book. I want all assets on them now. I need her to write the next chapter. What works about Argyle is that it's about Ali at its core. I have a feeling we can explain the review scores. Because there was hope for this stuff if you had Henry Cavill doing spy stuff. Agent Argyle. Little help. Or other people doing spy stuff. The scene in the train looked alright. I love this book! But the only way with this kind of parody tone it was going to work around a novelist is if you did Night and Day. You had a spy doing a lot of cool spy stuff, and then you had a hot damsel in distress who was there to be dragged around, panicked, and be absolutely useless at everything. <laughs> Now, one of the issues with the movie is you are going to struggle with the hot damsel in distress. Now, I know a lot of people aren't going to trust the critic scores, but it's worth pointing out top critics is 19% compared to all audience, which is 61. The thing is with critic scores, though, is you can often tell as much about the movie about who likes it compared to who doesn't. And the Mary Sue loves it. Four out of five. The reality is that Argyle is very fun. Leaving the theatre felt the same as when I watched Kingsman The Secret Service for the first time. I wanted more. Grace Randolph loved it. Absolutely ridiculous. You may not be able to tell that she loves it from the first two words, or the next, which will probably be a deal breaker for many. It's always a great review when you're caveating your audience. I thought it was amazing. You won't like it though, you won't like it. Now the great thing about me is I have low standards, but you won't like it. What I'll put up with will be a deal breaker for you. It's not acceptable behaviour. It is um, embarrassing. Rockwell and Howard deliver a fun date movie. It's a chick flick, everybody. That's exactly what I want to see. This is a shoddy and derivative Bond pastiche. It was so bad they had to make English sound like a long dead language just to accurately describe it. An unbearably self-satisfied smirk of a spy caper. It's a high concept elevator pitch stuck between floors. Could theoretically be a fun movie, but it's so self-conscious and self-admiring, the thought of Argyle 2 and 3 is dispiriting. It just means that our stories are worth telling, and I think the success review-wise of our film shows that our stories are worth telling. This is a movie where the cat steals the show. No wonder the Mary Sue enjoyed it. That's the same site that had a problem with uh, the audience reviews, because they were talking about Bryce Dallas Howard. One emblematic user compared her to his wife, which is great and fine. So why are you about to complain about it? But he used the word thick in his review. Oh, it's really nice you compare her to a wife. Just don't make any comment about her, though. Just like, you look like my wife, and leave it there. Don't use any descriptors or give any information. They actually describe it as gross, which is weird, because that's complimentary. Some people wouldn't have used two Cs. That's how I feel. G what do you do? F. Why? But when you find out why the Mary Sue loves this movie, well, I mean, their first picture is pretty descriptive as it is. What is the target market for this movie? Does explain why they focus the marketing on Henry Cavill. <laughs> despite the fact he's barely in the movie. What makes Argyle stand out is focusing the story on Ali Conway. How you can watch the Argyle trailer and think, I need to focus on that bint will always elude me. I'm in some really big trouble, Mom. Whoever made that decision at the studio, the two main things in their lives are ovaries and antidepressants. Having that female perspective makes all the difference. I can see why you liked it. Argyle keeps you engaged in its over two hour runtime. A lot of the reviews disagree with that one. An incoherent, bloated mess filled with stupid plot twists, awful dialogue, and a gimmicky cat that looks fake for most of the movie. Henry Cavill is not the main star. Argyle is a convoluted and spectacular wacky action comedy loaded with bombshell reveals. Gets turned into a funhouse pretzel as a twist barrage constantly reshapes the narrative. This is bad. This is really bad. Agent Argyle might be a male. This is the Mary Sue. I just love they start sentences like that. The kind of sentence that you're expecting a but after it. Oh, there is. But. What makes Argyle work is this. it's about Ali at its core. This doesn't fall into the same old tropes. Yeah, there won't be any masculine men here. Thank you very much. This isn't Bond. Every year, 70 million girls are deprived of even a basic education. Well, not classic Bond. Maybe modern Bond. 
crying. I am an unapologetic fan of the Kingsman's movies, so am I, they're amazing. I've talked heavily about how they are responsible for my job at the Mary Sue, getting less amazing by the second. Actually responsible for a lot of horrific events on the internet, as I'm finding out. But I do recognise that the movies fall into a lot of sexist tropes that spy movies champion. Just like that, the good again. The ping pong of quality culture, it's a fickle beast. What Argyle does is erase that completely from the narrative, mainly through Ali Conway's keyboard. It's not just about money and power. We're afraid to walk the streets at night, even more afraid to return to our own homes. Like I say, those critic scores becoming more believable by the second. This is from someone who likes the movie. Oh, what I really liked it was we just removed any testosterone. What makes Argyle stand out is that Ali is our guide. She's the main character and really gives off that reader insert feel. You've heard of self inserts where the writers have such low IQ, they can't do anything except put themselves into the script. Well, now we're doing it for the viewers. Don't you want to go and see a movie where the main character is your average Mary Sue writer? I know I do. I feel so seen. It's like, I wish I was Daredevil. Cats do rule. I understand why she feels like she's the main character who's been inserted into the movie. Oh, she's got cats and lithium. <laughs> God, I hate that cat. The best aspect of Argyle is the cat. This is from somebody that likes the movie. Now, there are some movies I'd say the same thing about. For instance, in AI, there was a living teddy who was the best part of that movie. Thing is, that's not a compliment. The teddy was, ha, that's good. But the rest of the movie was trash. That's why it's the best part. If a cat is the best part of your movie, you probably should have at least bought a dog. Although, then it wouldn't have appealed as much to all the self-inserts. Largely because they'd have to take it for a walk and they're too lazy for that. Cat looks after itself. Strong and independent. Pisses on the floor. <laughs> You can take an analogy too far. You stupid woman with your weird child. The cat is not used as an ugh, cat suck joke. No, why would we do that? We defend the majority of our audience. Often in movies, we are subjected to lies about our feline friends, and cat owners continue to get the short end of the stick. This feels like I'm reading your diary. This isn't a movie review. This is therapy. I'm fed up with people taking the piss out of cats. I've got 17. I sleep in a cat tree. <laughs> While Vaughn works with dogs in the Kingsman franchise, what an animal. How dare he? Alfie's role in Argyle is different. I can just imagine her putting this picture on the website and going, that is actually me. He grounds Ali to real life. It makes her instantly relatable. The fact that she's got a cat. I've long said that Alice in Borderland is one of the best examples of how to do characterization, but it seems that some other people just have far lower standards. Stick a cat in it. It's actually me! <laughs> I have a cat! Did you take a stupid pill with your breakfast this morning, Admiral? I can really see myself in this movie. It makes Ellie instantly relatable. She's just a woman trying to write with her cat. That's something I can definitely relate to. I guess that from your first paragraph. And I'm not alone in that thinking, no, you are part of an ever-increasing demographic in modern times. <laughs> it's a wonderfully fun time. She's got a cat! Leaving the theatre felt the same as Kingsman. I wanted to know more. Will the cat get all the treats? I couldn't have done better in this review if I deliberately tried to write a parody. Argyle instantly made me care about the characters. Yeah, because of the cats. Have a tip that we should know. You can get cat litter boxes that empty themselves. Give you more time for your writing career. Now, obviously, lots of people don't care about the critics. I do because I think the reviews are hilarious. <laughs> but if you don't trust the scores, or reviews from other people, we've got Nerdrotic saying, Argyle is almost indescribably bad. Vaughn directed an absolute stinker, fan fiction garbage, Henry Cavill needs to fire his agent. And the last bit is important when you've got people like George R. R. Martin going, social media is ruled by anti-fans who would rather talk about the stuff they hate than the stuff they love. Okay, I would rather talk about the stuff I hate than the stuff I love. I think there's more to say and it's funnier. Called having a sense of humour, Martin. You might want to try and grow one, but it's the last bit I want to draw your attention to. And delight in dancing on the graves of anyone whose film has flopped. That is only true for the people they think deserve it. If you're evil when you fail, I will laugh. I'm not sure that's my fault. But when Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning flopped, People didn't cheer. And this has Henry Cavill in it. Nobody wanted this to fail. It did that on its own merit. And that is the difference between needs to fire his agent and needs to be fired. Is whether people like you or not. Do they think that you're better than the trash you're participating in or causing it? Then we got Quarter Black Garrett. Argyle is incredibly bad. Henry Cavill chucked again. Full bait and switch, starts fine, and by the end, turns into nonsense. This last bit, again, backed up by all the reviews. The longer it goes on and the more twists they try and add, the more gobbledygook comes out the other end. And I can't help thinking that this face is just another actually me moment for the Mary Sue. I can't believe you do that to a cat! <laughs>
Then we got Uber Geek. The critics were right. This is bad. The main character is a complete Mary Sue. No wonder the Mary Sue loved it so much. You've even got the Irish Times talking about Howard, saying her inherent warmth and charms adds an interesting balance to the violence that she ultimately gets to inflict on circling maniacs. Doesn't really sound like the comedy relief. The damsel in distress. It's slow, obvious plot holes. CGI cat made me think of the Marvels. Not a surprise. Due to the ever-increasing demographic, I think you will find a lot more movies that look like this. Because they're actually me! Oh my god, I feel so seen! I too could be a middle-aged superhero with a cat! Now, Henry Cavill says Argyle sequels depend on whether the audience likes what we've done. Mate, I wouldn't hold your breath. But then again, you're barely in the movie. I don't know why you care. Although, if you do care, it might be a bit worrying for you, considering you got 6.5 million on the opening day. After this movie cost Apple 200 million dollars. I do like Variety's spin on it, though, going, oh, it's gonna face an uphill battle <laughs> to actually become profitable. Estimated to get an international weekend opening of 16.9 million. Argyle tells the tale of a best-selling spy novelist and cat-loving recluse. She will join an international spy and do anything for him. Set make a sandwich. The movie starts with something that they could have lifted from Kingsman, which actually makes up the start of the trailer, presumably, because they knew it was the best bit. <laughs> Before we ditch all that good stuff to talk about some random bint. God, I hate that cat. But she's got a cat, you know. That saves the movie. But she's writing a book, it predicts the future, everyone's after her. Cute globe trotting, gunplay, some hyped up fight scenes. One big twist is followed by a whole series of smaller twists piled on one after the other, leading you to wonder if Vaughn was purposefully trying to find the breaking point regarding an audience's tolerance for switcheroos. Congratulations, guys. You've found it. I have a feeling this is why the critics say it makes less sense the longer it goes on. You can't keep lying to your audience and expect to go, oh, I'm so amazed. It ends up wearing out its welcome. You feel like they've cracked the code of taking all of your favorite actors and leeching out every single thing that you usually like about them. <laughs> The spiky romantic interplay falls flat. I don't know whether I trust that one. Grace Randolph said it was a fun date movie. Grace wouldn't let me down. Maybe you just don't like cats enough. <laughs> Post credits kicker seems to hint at more adventures to come. A concept which feels less like a promise and more like a threat. Luckily, it's a threat that probably won't happen because the audience will actually have to like it. And it seems like they don't. You may go into the movie wondering who's the real Argyle, but you'll leave with a different question. Shouldn't such a colossal waste of talent and precious time be illegal? No, this is the kind of standard thing that you get from Hollywood nowadays. They don't know who their audience is. You're making a comedy action movie, so it should be for men. They're the ones that like those kind of movies. They're the ones that went to the Kingsman movies. That means you get a load of guys together in a room who then make it for that audience. And instead, what we have with this this is a literally me, Mary Sue, a reader insert with a cat and antidepressants. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can take the Mary Sues. It's no wonder people aren't going to the cinema to see these kind of movies. It's a fairly large and ever increasing demographic. It just doesn't go to the cinema to watch action movies. And if you can't tell the difference why this is night and day difference to night and day, then I can't help you. Well, those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.